All right, welcome back to another episode of D-Web Decoded. I'm your host for today's show, Aaron Stanley, and today I'm joined by Lighthouse CEO and co-founder Nandit Mera. Nandit, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm quite excited to be here. Amazing. So Nandit, you're like one of the the kind of like the prototypical uh, Filecoin founders. I feel like you've been in the ecosystem for quite some time. You came in as through like a hackathon, uh, ended up getting a grant from the Protocol Labs team, and now you've built really one of the 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 most important applications right now in the Filecoin ecosystem. So really excited to dive into this and uh, learn a bit more about your story as well. Uh, but before we dive in, why don't you just give us a quick introduction to yourself and how you found your way into the Filecoin world? Awesome. Yeah. So I started my Web3 journey in 2019. The first project that I got to work on as a software developer at that time was Nexus Mutual, which is now one of the biggest DeFi insurance protocol. So in 2020 was the time when the Filecoin network was launching and I heard about it through a hackathon. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Previously, there have been smart contracts on Ethereum that I was working on, but now there's a resource network, which is storage, which everyone has interacted in their life sometime for their personal data or for their company's data. And I'm like, okay, now we can... um, store this data on a blockchain network. So that as a simple idea just excited me. And I started learning more and uh, joined this hackathon, HackFS, where I thought, okay, this would be a perfect opportunity for me to learn about what Filecoin is, what are the possibilities. Interestingly, one uh, one of those hackathons uh, of the Filecoin network, that was a good bounty, first of all. But then uh, one of the portfolio companies of the Filecoin early on, Fleek, they offered me a job that, okay, you build this cool hackathon project. You have this uh, good set of skills. Uh, do you want to work with us full time? I'm like, yeah, why not? I want to go deeper into the space. Then I joined the company full time. Uh, and then for the next six months, the key thing that I worked for them was Filecoin integrations because they had this website deployment tool where they wanted it to all the website data to be stored permanently on Filecoin. Previously, it was just on IPFS. So I started working on that. But as an individual, I always, you know, wanted to start something of my own. So when I got an opportunity to build an open source project in the ecosystem and got that funded by uh, Protocol Labs, I jumped on that opportunity and started building what at that time in 2021 was a Filecoin Ethereum bridge. Interestingly, we also call that Lighthouse. So when we transitioned to actually building Lighthouse two years back, which is around late 2021, uh, we just kept it the same name, like the Filecoin Ethereum bridge to the permanent storage model that we've been working on right now. Uh, but yeah, happy to dive deeper onto uh, why we started with Lighthouse precisely. Uh, but yeah, I think it's been a good journey from just a newbie learning about this technology to participating in a hackathon, uh, winning the bounty, joining a portfolio company, and then through an open source project, starting my own startup. No, that's amazing, and I think that's that's a pathway that that uh, you know we I think we need to like applaud and congratulate because I think that's that's you know I think you're you're like the prototypical builder, right? Like who who kind of comes in through Hackathon, comes up through you know through a portfolio company, gets a grant, has an idea, ends up turning into uh, you know built a product, ends up turning into really one of the most fundamental pieces of infrastructure in the whole ecosystem. I mean, I think that's that's like that's a, to be applauded. So congratulations for that. Um, so let's dive into you know some of the specifics of what you guys are building with Lighthouse, and I really like the Lighthouse mission where you guys have a variety of of, of projects you're working on, a variety of, of of solutions in the stack, et cetera. But like you're really focused on kind of solving like pain points for developers in the Filecoin ecosystem. So I'd, I'd love for you to maybe expound on that a bit and talk a bit about okay, what are some of the pain points that you guys set out to solve, and um, and then you know we can go from there into some of the actual solutions that you have uh, built and deployed. Yeah, so there were uh, three primary problems that we were seeing that developers were facing at start to use decentralized storage networks. First was facing the risk of loss of data, where they had to renew your data again and again. So that's the key problem Lighthouse started with, that, okay, how can we provide permanent storage where you own your data? The second was around access control, that when we saw these decentralized storage networks, they then provide encryption and access control. And that's like eliminating more than half of the use cases. So as a developer, when we were building 
Lighthouse, we thought, okay, this is one of the primary use cases that we want to build into our layer of Lighthouse. And the third is more on the lines of user experience, that we need right set of user interfaces, be it dashboards, be it the right set of SDKs, like uh, in commonly used languages like JavaScript, Python, etc., cetera, uh, for developers to easily build on decentralized storage networks. So I think those are the three primary things we have been focusing on permanent storage, access control, and then the right user experience for developers. Amazing, amazing. And uh, I'd like to touch on all these in a bit more depth, but let's start with the permanent storage angle. And you you kind of alluded to this earlier, but I think there was there's kind of this perception that, uh, you know, Lighthouse has been sort of, you know, Filecoin's answer to Arweave, right? Where that was maybe one of the, the value proposition, parts of the value proposition of Arweave that was maybe something that Filecoin didn't necessarily offer was, Hey, you just pay this one thing, and then your store, your 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 data is stored to the blockchain forever, right? You don't have to worry about it anymore. You know it's going to be there, etc. We didn't Filecoin didn't necessarily have that functionality built into it. So I would love for you to talk a bit more about um, the solution that you've designed to enable uh, 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 permanent storage uh, using you know using this idea of programmable storage, I guess. Uh, you know, and, and, and programmability through the Filecoin virtual machine. I would love to you if you could walk us through the architecture of like, just how does that actually work? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the, uh, one of the pinnacle moments in the whole Filecoin history has been last year when the Filecoin virtual machine came out in the market. And we were like, okay, this is quite interesting now that we have not just a base storage network that we can store our data on, but we can program it in as many ways as possible. So now, before when we didn't have concepts of uh, renew, repair replications, those were the things that got possible now. So what we meant by programmable storage is that uh, something traditional cloud doesn't provide, where not just you can store your data, but you can program it in all the ways that you can manage how many replications do you want, how often do you want your data to be renewed? And what happens if some certain set of miners drop your data? So there's this automatic process of renew, repair, replication that works. And we can program it through the power of Filecoin virtual machine and the base Filecoin layer. Now talking about permanent storage, the key thesis there was to build something which is much cheaper than RV, but then parallelly, uh, there's a more um, options for composability with the whole sets of application that users are building. So what we mean by that is we have right now an on-chain endowment pool that users pay upfront fees to. And what it essentially does is before your data expires with the Filecoin miners, it renews the storage deals again. And it maintains always a certain threshold of replications that you initially set. Now, interestingly, some of the difference from uh, RV that already existed is one that our endowment pool is on an EVM machine, which is Filecoin virtual machine in this case, where we have DeFi available. Since DeFi is available, like any real world university or museum endowment, we can grow our endowment pool by lending uh, to these DeFi protocols, like this glyph that is existing. So we can lend to that uh, and then grow the endowment pool much faster than our view does. And now, since it's on smart contracts and replicating smart contracts over and over again is essentially a cost of pennies. So what we enable at Lighthouse very soon would be a single core Lighthouse endowment pool. But then you can imagine a very domain-specific endowment pools. Let's say there will be an endowment pool specific to storing of NFTs or storing of a whole Solana state data or storing of an entire AI data set. And then... What users will be able to do, they will be collectively able to store their data on it. They will be able to monetize it, not just through the yield mechanism uh, that we propose through lending to Glyph and Aave and Compound, but also through access control when other parties access the data. And very soon in the future, also computing over the data and generating additional sources of revenue. So overall, I think all the... Plainly, people would think that we are building just RV1 Filecoin, but we are bringing a lot of robust functionalities that would enable a whole data economy on Filecoin easily. Now, that's super interesting. And I, and, I, and that's a really w- clear way of understanding it, the way, the, the way you're just framing it in that, okay, I, I myself as a user, I pay a small amount into this endowment pool. The endowment pool is then uh, you know, interacting with a protocol like Glyph. 
that is that is provide generating a yield. So a combination of the user fees plus the yield is ultimately paying for the renewal, like the the the, the automatic renewal of these storage deals uh, that are you know, via the smart contracts, right? So so essentially, this thing this thing is just just keeps renewing in perpetuity uh, until the user decides to terminate it, essentially, or or however many many uh, sectors they want to renew for, essentially. Um, so that's super interesting. That's very, very clever. Um, and, and kind of like really the, I, I think the, the, you know, the prototype use case of the FEM right now is, is this idea yeah. that we can have this program, like this, this permanent storage really built into, uh, I- into the network now. And since we're on this topic of programmable, of programmability in, in storage and storage markets and in data storage in general, um, I wanted to ask you a bit about like, Kind of, you know, going back a bit, stepping back a bit more, big picture, like why is programmable storage really like kind of a killer use case in your view? Like you've talked about this in some of your uh, presentations I've seen on YouTube and elsewhere, where y- your point is that like this, like this, this idea of programmable storage is really just not something that Web two cloud storage providers can offer at this point, right? And I would love for you to expand a bit on what you mean by that and like why this is such a, an important application in your view. Yeah, absolutely. So essentially what programmable storage does is that there's a storage resource as simple as that, but now you can program it through the power of smart contracts. And then whatever parameters that you set, um, there could be an interesting composability around it. So as I mentioned, um, you can essentially configure how many replications you want, uh, how often does the file renew, and what happens if certain set of miners uh, drop the file and possible in the future, you should be able to configure what locations that you want to store your data on. So imagine if you are in Europe, if, if you're in uh, US or some other country out here in Asia, you should be able to configure how many replications you want in what location. As simple as it sounds, traditional cloud doesn't provide primarily for two reasons. One is it's a very complex functionality, but then the second is more on the lines of how do you trust and how do you verify that all of these functionalities are being uh, followed when what they give you is just a URL that you have trust on, but not the whole content addressing and the proofs that we are giving you uh, with programmable storage at Lighthouse. But interestingly, what that allows us to do is build our own permanent storage model and enable the, and enable the whole data economy of endowment pools around it. But then parallelly in the future, there's going to be more interesting applications where I can definitely imagine somebody building a insurance pool for these, not just storage providers, but also the data sets of data being stored. And if certain conditions are not met, certain SLAs are not met because SLAs is something that uh, can incur a lot of fees, like millions of dollars for like large enterprises. But now the fact that those SLAs are programmed into uh, the smart contracts itself over a base storage layer, I think it just opens up a lot of possibilities uh, with the current efficiency, but then the new applications possible uh, on smart contracts as well. Very cool, very cool. And um, reverting back to the second point that of your area of focus that you mentioned earlier, uh, of of things that were you know not existing in the Filecoin ecosystem that you really set, or a pain point in the existing ecosystem that you set out to really solve is, is that point of encryption, right? And uh, Filecoin data is on on board onto Filecoin network does not is not like natively encrypted. Um, there is the option of, of you know, the, the, the owner of the data to actually use an encrypting service then to upload it, but that creates a bit of, you know, user experience onboarding challenges. So you guys set up out to really create a service that makes the, the encryption aspect a bit more simple and, and streamlined essentially. And, and also with, you know, creating, you know, very user-friendly ways of being able to actually access that data. So I love what you guys have been doing with the, the token gated, uh, uh, framework, right? Where, okay, I, I upload a piece of data and I basically say, okay, whoever has the token, this, this select token that I issue can, uh, is the only person who's able to actually see that encrypted file. So we'd love for you to maybe expand a bit on just like what you guys have built here and, uh, like why it's been, why it's been successful so far. Yeah. So the initial idea of this encryption SDK that we built, we called as it as lighthouse coverage. So coverage is a Hindi word, uh, which essentially means shield. So it's like shielding your data. So the initial key two problems that we are solving with this are 
One is on the set of user experience that, okay, I want to store encrypted data and I want to share it across my friends. I want to build some interesting encrypted applications, but uh, where do I store these encrypted keys? So one thing is user need not store these encrypted keys on their client's end because then there's a problem of, okay, what if I lo lost these keys? How do I share these keys to another set of users? But another thing that it's also solving is uh, the centralization risk. That, okay, if I am not storing those keys on the client's end, then I'm storing it on my server's end. But then what Lighthouse does is we use something called as BLS threshold cryptography that essentially allows us to split your keys among multiple nodes who independently verify uh, your ownership. So next time, Aaron, when you come and you want to access your uh, encrypted data, you sign with your wallet. And then that wallet could be your MetaMask. That could be even a Solana wallet like Phantom. That could even be a Web2 signature like from Google Auth or GitHub. Or essentially, it could be even a passkey signature like a fingerprint or face face ID login. So we support mm -hmm. all of these authentication methods. And then these nodes uh, that store your shards of the keys, they independently verify that does Aaron has access to the data uh, that he's asking for. Uh, and then um, all the keys which are sharded, they are aggregated on the client side, and then you can decrypt the file. So what it allows you to do is now, as simple as it sounds, you can now store encrypted data on Filecoin, but you can also build something we call as token gated applications. So what does that mean is with any on-chain logic, let's say if I own one Pudgy on Ethereum, if I own 1,000 fill tokens on Filecoin network, or if I own something like 2,500 tokens on Aave. So I can have composable uh, chain logics that if I satisfy either of these three conditions, then I can access the file. Now, if anyone on the planet would um, satisfy these conditions, like any Pudgy Penguin owner, um, if the user sets the ownership to Pudgy Penguin, uh, folks who can um, view this file, then without me even sharing the private key of the file, all the Pudgy owners should be able to access the file. And we also built some cool time logged conditions there. So let's say, imagine you want to build an application where uh, on your next birthday, I gift you 10 USGC worth of tokens that is locked for a uh, one year time frame. So I can build that logic um, through this Lighthouse coverage encryption SDK that we built. That's very cool. That unlocks a, a really wide range of use cases, even just the ones you're mentioning there. Um, I mean, I think kind of got my creative juices flowing a little bit like, oh, wow, like you could use this for a variety of different like real world things. Right. Um, and then you mentioned earlier that with with the development of, of some of the these encryption tools or, 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 or specifically that not having these encryption tools available really limits the amount of use cases that you can that can be like deployed on the, or like, you know, really used on the Filecoin network. And I was wondering if you could maybe talk a bit about more about like how, how is like was the lack of quality encryption services really like maybe hindering, uh, you know, data onboarding off the network or the types of data sets like we saw in the network or or even just the development of, of different dApps like this kind of, I guess, kind of sort of the inverse of my my previous question, but would love if you, you could take it from that angle. Yeah, I think the best way to answer that would be to look at the applications that are now possible. And I would uh, go from which is the most basic to some of the most advanced ones. The most basic is, okay, I have this decentralized storage network that's offering me low cost of storage and, and I want to back up my personal data out of my iPhone or out of my uh, desktop. Like everyone's iPhone is always saying that um, iCloud not backed up because everyone finishes that space and iCloud is asking you pay me every month. But now <laughs> since we have encryption, you can yeah. actually uh, store private data on Filecoin and then have a lower cost and better user experience along the way. Uh, the second option is more on the lines of enterprises. We are working with one of the teams based out of North America who is building a B2B2C product for lawyers to offer to their clients to store all their legal and hierarchical doc documents. Now, sensitive documents like that require a very, uh, I would say, military-grade uh, encryption schemes. Uh, and we have made like a step towards that, that now if you want to store like that critical data on Filecoin as well, you can use our encryption. And definitely there's a scope of improvement towards new methods of cryptography that's coming up. And third is more in the lines of the whole crypto space where we are seeing a lot of applications with 
huge amount of data flowing in, especially with the whole crypto AI space. Recently with Filecoin, we announced partnerships with Ocean Protocol, Eternal AI. We have some more partners lined up, which have huge amount of AI data sets, AI inference data sets, and along the side, the whole application sets, which cannot be made public because already people are, you know, worried about, okay, if I'm using chat GPT, um, is my commands public? Can anyone see it? And that's hindering enterprise use as well. And with the whole um, new data marketplaces that's popping up in the whole crypto AI economy and with the whole smart agents um, chains that it's coming up, um, our encryption and access control is useful for their persistent long-term storage, but also for the right access control that can be um, controlled and managed with the right ACL conditions. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, and that's really good. For, really good point. You you kind of front ran my next question, actually. <laughs> but the, but we were just at consensus uh, 2024 in Austin, where a lot of the side events and a lot of the even within the main event, there's just a lot of focus on like decentralized AI and you know deep in, you know all the all the kind of the buzzwords, right? But but there's a pretty obvious use case here for how like like a, the role of a pro- protocol like Filecoin and services like what you guys are offering really fits into this because. Uh, people are looking for solutions on like, okay, like how do you stop, uh, or how, if ChatGPT is going to be going around hovering up everybody's data and training it and using it in their training models, like how do we ensure that people are being adequately like compensated for that or that, that, that data is being properly gated, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, I think solutions like what you guys are building here makes a lot of sense as far as like, okay, here's a way that we can, you know, we can, we can store this data privately and securely, but we can make sure that the people that are actually credentialed uh, to access it have access, and and we can do this all in a decentralized manner, right? I think that's the obviously the most important part. Um, and so, we'd love for you to maybe talk a bit about more about uh, the partnerships that you guys have with with like Ocean Protocol, because I think that's a really interesting example of like how this could work in practice. Um, and uh, maybe 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 first explain a bit more like what Ocean Protocol is and what they're doing, and then like how are they kind of working with 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 you guys to to facilitate some of this? Yeah, sure. So there are a couple of crypto AI domains, like general crypto domains that we are seeing traction from uh, for folks to use Filecoin using Lighthouse. The first one you mentioned is the whole AI space, where some of the top projects out there existing are Ocean Protocol, um, where what they do is have this data marketplace where anyone can come and contribute data. And on the other hand, people can borrow that data and use in whatever manner that they want to use. Interestingly, Ocean is also merging into like a single coin very soon with likes of Fetch and Singularity. So there's a, a good happening in the whole crypto AI space. And with Singularity as well, what we are working with is in similar domain where they will be using Lighthouse for storing all the uh, data sets and then the inference AI data that their user generates, but then parallelly um, use our access control and encryption as well, where only the right set of users uh, who have paid for the data should be able to access it. And then we got a bunch of um, new traction from this company called as Eternal AI. Uh, which is one of this Bitcoin L2 network and specializing in the AI domain itself. A lot of Bitcoin L2s are thriving nowadays. Um, and then Eternal AI is bringing whole stack of their application data onto Lighthouse and leveraging us for the access control as well. Um, and I think what I'm excited long term is uh, not just the storage and access control, but over the compute over data as well, where uh, we enable these applications in the future. We're still working on some of the R&D involved in that where now they have data which has the access control and now you want to compute over data uh, encryptedly without revealing the data itself. There are some interesting schemes around FHE that's coming up that Zama team has worked upon. So um, I think we are building a bunch of these tools that will long-term benefit the whole crypto AI space. And some of the other domains that we are seeing some traction from is data availability where we already got two Bitcoin L2 networks one is Cisco and another is BBF Network, who are storing the entire chain data on uh, Lighthouse. Uh, and then oh, wow. we've seen s- similar examples in the whole Filecoin ecosystem where Solana team is also storing entire Solana state data, which is now, I think, over 400 terabytes. Uh, and then 
why they want to store on filecoin is of two reasons one is it helps them to replicate their data and have a low cost primitive with storage proofs that they can verify but secondly anyone who's building on these ecosystem let's say if there are rpc providers if there are index providers like like alchemy graph protocol now these guys need not set up their own archive or standard nodes but they can read through the data that's stored on filecoin and save a lot of cost in terms of operational expenses that's amazing no, i didn't realize that that there's two other bitcoin l2s that were storing on on filecoin through through lighthouse that's super interesting um, yeah, I think this is a trend that we're going to probably see a bit more of uh, as 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 folks realize that this is a use case, right? And this the tooling gets better, and et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, I would love to um, maybe switch gears slightly here and just talk a bit about who. How do you kind of segment out like the users of uh, Lighthouse? I guess in my mind, I'm thinking of it as like, okay, you have you know uh, developers who are looking to build and deploy. Uh, you have maybe you know protocols that are looking to kind of integrate like a, you know, like one of these like Bitcoin L2s we were just talking about looking to store kind of their, you know, their, their block history data on Filecoin via Lighthouse. And then you have presumably like retail folks, like, you know, like someone like myself, I just like I'm, my iPhone, you know, iCloud storage ran out, you know, I don't want to pay for it. How, how can I back this up in a, in a secure way? And in, in a, in a, in a, that's cheaper than, than paying Apple. Um, like how would, um, I guess maybe we'll start with the retail user question, like as, as just a kind of an, a, a retail person, like how would I go about using this? And then on, kind of on the back end, how does my, my, you know, like, you know, five gigabytes of data or whatever, like ultimately find its way onto the Filecoin network? Yeah, for retails, uh, we have this product that we call as Lighthouse Files, which exists on this domain, like files.lighthouse.storage. We should probably link that in the description uh, below as well. Uh, but what it allows you to do is you can log in through your Google account or your normal email account. Or if you're very web native, you can log in through your MetaMask or Phantom wallets as well. And easily after authentication, you can start uploading files. And when you upload files, that could be public files. You can turn on encryption uh, and then store your private data and you can share it across to different wallet addresses or your friends at different email addresses. Interesting thing to highlight there is the payment methods that we support. Uh, when you go to our payment methods on this uh, web dashboard that we have, you can either pay through, if you're crypto native, through uh, stable coins like USDC, USDT, or DAI, or you can even pay through your credit card or debit card uh, through a payment platform like Stripe. So we have both of these integrated and live. For now, we have this web interface and very soon we are building like a desktop interface as well that will allow you to upload like terabytes of data out of your local uh, laptop and uh, peripheral devices directly onto Filecoin. Uh, but primarily, our focus as a team right now is towards enabling these kind of applications. So what we are looking for is ideally folks to build these end user applications and we providing the low cost primitive so that they need not worry about the whole infrastructure overhead of how it's working behind, how it's interacting with the Filecoin network. They can just get easy to use APIs to upload their data and then get the right proofs. And talking about the segmentation, uh, we see primarily three kinds of users that we are working with us um, in terms of developers and builders. First is new developers and new builders where hackathons is a primary onboarding way for us. Most of the hackathons you go around the world, like the recent one was in ETH London and then previous one on Sydney and upcoming one in ETH CC as well. Lighthouse is the primary go-to tooling for developers to build on Filecoin and just learn about Filecoin network itself. Um, the second part of focus towards users um, is towards these platform integrations, where right now we are working with NFT storage team who have already have more than 100 million NFT objects uh, over 500 terabytes of data. And most of the top NFT marketplaces, consumers like OpenSea, Magic Eden, Rarible. So now they, with their new product, are using Lighthouse underneath. Uh, so we are aiming for more such native integrations with NFTs, with AI platforms like Ocean, or with DE platforms like BVM Network and Syscoin. And third is more in terms of enterprise customers because Filecoin doesn't limit um, to the amount of data that you can store. So we do get a lot of B2B inquiries 
and the foundation has been really helpful in that as well to supporting not just us but bunch of other projects in the network as well uh, to bring high quality data sets uh, enterprise data sets also onboarded to filecoin easily yeah, I love how Lighthouse has become kind of this uh, like one stop shop for uh, you know <laughs> all any types of any type of whatever type of Filecoin user you happen to be, right? Uh, or Filecoin user or builder or data client or whatever. Like Lighthouse has be kind of become this one stop shop where you'll you'll find what you're looking for. Um, and um, maybe talk about uh, just to, to kind of wrap up here. Talk about a bit about the roadmap. Like what what do you guys have in store for the rest of the year? And uh, how do you see this progressing uh, as your adoption continues to grow? Yeah, for sure. So I think I always like to talk roadmaps in short term, medium term and long term horizons. I think for us, the short term focus is um, this endowment pool and the data endowments that we are talking about. We are getting them audited right now. So possibly when uh, users, uh, viewers are seeing this video, we already have those endowment pools live in production. Uh, so that's one of the key focus. We will have a lighthouse core pool, and then we are helping the NFT storage team to um, set up an NFT specific endowment pool for storing NFTs long term. So that's coming up in a short term horizon within the coming month. In terms of three to six months horizon, we are looking to make lighthouse a permissionless protocol where we already touched about the power of FPM programmability, but essentially what we want Lighthouse to be is a permissionless layer, which is not controlled by just one team, which is me and my team, uh, but then uh, the whole community, uh, not just in the Falcon network, but beyond that in Web3 community. So we will have likely have a token in the future uh, around in Q3 that we are aiming for, although like still tentative in terms of some uh, products we want to get it live and traction we want to achieve till then. So that's one of the key things in medium term that getting Lighthouse permissionless. And I think long term, the focus is to set up Lighthouse as a go-to layer for um, crypto and beyond applications that are building on Filecoin, like AI, DEP, and NFTs. And for that, there are a bunch of more um, elements that have to build. One is in the terms of user experience that we get more compatibility with the traditional cloud like AWS GCP to migrate data from them uh, to Filecoin easily or through like S3 compatible APIs. Uh, and then another one is one that I already highlighted, which is a desktop app where if you want to upload terabytes of data, it's very easy to have like a desktop interface to, to do that. And third is more on the lines of what are the future possibilities of the whole data economy, which I've already touched, but uh, with these data endowments, I want you all to, you know, imagine a future where um, these are like a data DAOs where people are contributing funds, not just to store these data and preserve these data long term, but then they are actually um, earning yield in multiple ways. That could be through something like Glyph or something like Aave and Compound by lending the endowment pool funds, or that could be even in future access control, let's say if someone wants to have access towards uh, these millions of NFTs that will be stored, uh, they can pay some certain amount. Uh, and then with all of these AI models that's coming up, people should be able to compute uh, over these data and then generate yield for these whole data endowments and um, the DAO members who are controlling these endowments and bringing the future of data economy to life. But yeah, super excited about but all of these things, short term, medium term, and long term. That's true. Wow. Come. Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems like uh, you are very well positioned to be at the center of all of this, right? <laughs> so, um, so Nandi, I just want to congratulate you on everything you've built so far and uh, what you guys have, have accomplished in just a couple of short years here and, and uh, the ambitious roadmap that you have that, that looks like very well positioned, uh, just given kind of the current, the current trends and the current, current lines of interest and whatnot. So, um, I'll kick it back to you for any final thoughts. If there's anything else you want to share with our audience uh, before we let you go. And also, what's the best way for folks to to find you if they want to uh, reach out or if they want to just learn more about Lighthouse? Yeah, I think for the audience, my key takeaway would be that now we are coming at a phase uh, in the whole decentralized storage ecosystem and the data economy where very soon we will have the right set of tools for the applications that we wanted to build like three years back, like a scalable end user retail app, 
uh, very efficient data economy where I can compute and generate yield for all the DAO members. So all of these interesting applications are coming up and we have the right infrastructure to enable them. So I would like to invite you all to learn more about Filecoin and Lighthouse and start building something in reach out to me on either Telegram, Twitter. I'm on, or even on LinkedIn as well. I go everywhere with uh, my first name and last name. That is at the rate Nandit Mehra. So that's very easy to find me and DM me. Amazing. Uh, well, Nandit, thanks again for your time. Congratulations again. And uh, thanks everyone for, for watching and listening. And we'll see you back soon with another great episode.